السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا ارحم الراحمين. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, teach us what benefit us, benefit us from what you taught us and increase us in knowledge. My dear beloved respected brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me and you from any harm. Ameen ya Allah. Today we have another episode of JAR, just a reminder, and these reminders are for myself and to all my beloved brothers and sisters. If you were told that President so-and-so or King so-and-so or the Army General so-and-so, he is the one who's going to protect you. He is the one who's going to be your guardian. You will feel at ease and you will feel very comfortable. How can I make Allah my wali? How can I make Allah my wali? How can I become one of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, if you look in the Quran on the translation of the word wali, most of the translations have translated it into friend. But honestly, that is not the complete meaning of wali. One of the meanings of wali is a friend, but wali is way more than a friend. Wali is a guardian, is a protector. Wali is, subhanAllah, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, waliyu alladheena amanu. Allah is their wali. It's really one of those words in Arabic that you cannot find just one exact word in English as a translation. So how can I become a wali from the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allahu Akbar. Listen, my brothers and sisters, for these few steps, insha'Allah ta'ala, and bi idhnillah, we will become awliya of Allah azza wa jal. First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself described who are the awliya in Surah Yunus, ayah 62 and 63, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ala inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. Who are they, Ya Allah? Alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqoon. Allah said, definitely Allah's awliya have nothing to fear nor to grieve. Who are they? These are the ones who have iman, they believe in Allah, strong believe in Allah, and they have Taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the first thing is to have Iman and Taqwa. A strong belief in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, in His attributes, in His names, uh, believing that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the all hearing, is the all seeing, is the all merciful, is the all powerful. Believing that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala have sent messengers uh, with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the seal of prophethood. There's no more messengers coming. Believing in all the books that Allah has revealed, believing in the, in the angels, believing that there is a day called the day of judgment where I will be standing in front of Allah and I will be reporting about everything that I did. Believing in the destiny that everything has been decreed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. A strong belief in Allah and having taqwa of Allah, being muttaqi, alladheena amanu wa kanu yattaqoon and they have taqwa of Allah, they have fear of Allah in public, they have fear of Allah in private, they have fear of Allah in everything they do in all their uh, uh, treatment to others they have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their business. They have fear of Allah when they are educating in, in any field that they master or they, 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 they work at. They have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do not sell haram. They do not buy haram. They have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first, iman and taqwa. Iman and taqwa to become one of the awliya of Allah azza wa jal. Second, 
reading and pondering upon the Quran, not only reading. My brothers and sisters, we concentrate a lot on reading. We concentrate a lot on memorizing. We concentrate a lot on listening. These are all means. They are all great. Don't get me wrong. They are all great, but they are means to get to the goal, which is tadabbur of the Quran, the pondering, the contemplation upon the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reading the Quran, the Quran with tadabbur, with pondering, it will change everything. I will treat every single uh, verse, every single ayah, I will treat it as it is a message from Allah to me. You know when you get a message, when you get a letter uh, from a person that you love so much and you respect so much and he is very famous and very important, you will be honored. Huh? You want to translate that message, you want to make sure you understand that message. Every ayah in the Quran is a message from Allah to humanity, to me, to you, to every single one of us. So we have to treat the Quran as messages from Allah Azza wa Jal to us. And in the Quran, there is subhanAllah an answer to all our worries, to all our questions, to all our doubts. وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَصَّلْنَاهُ تَفْصِيلًا And everything we have detailed in complete details. My brothers and sisters, dedicate. Reading is excellent. Read the Quran, but dedicate a part of the day, a part of the week, whatever you can, to understand and ponder, tafakkur upon the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, why is that one of the reasons that to become a wali? Because when you read the Quran with tadabbur, you will increase your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that increase of love will increase the obedience and staying away from what Allah has prohibited and that will elevate you to become one of the awliya of Allah azza wa jal. Second or third, increase the amount of nawafil, the optional ibadat. We all know that the fard, all the pillars of Islam are an obligation upon every Muslim. Beside that, we, have, we all have to do the obligation, right? Beside that, we are talking now about nawafil, optional. Every fard has an option. Salat, the fard salat that we know, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, they have optional salat also. Uh, the, the, the siyam, the fasting of Ramadan, there is optional fast of the Monday of Thursday, the three white days, the, the zakat, there is optional sadaqah, you give charity to anybody that is in need. The, the, the hajj, there's an optional umrah that you go and perform. Increase the optional ibadat, the qiyam of the layl, the performing salat al-qiyam at night. Uh, reading uh, the adhkar, reading the Quran, uh, going to uh, visit the sick, to uh, uh, calm someone who's going through uh, hardship. Uh, uh, increase the nawafil of the ibadat. That means if any time I have some extra time on my hand, I get up and I pray a few rak'ahs for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Increase the amount of the nawafil. Allah sub, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in the hadith al-Qudsi, وَمَا زَالَ عَبْدِي And my slave, my servant, keeps coming close to me with the nawafil until I love him. We come close to Allah with performing these nawafil. And then we gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the ultimate goal, is to gain his love. Fourth, Remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, constant dhikr of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Ya Allah, one of the most beautiful rewards of dhikr that really shakes my heart is when I hear or when I know for a fact, because Allah mentioned it in the Quran, is when I know that every time I remember Allah, Allah remembers me. Ya Allah. How great is that, my, my brother, my dear sister? 
Allah remembers you just because you constantly remember them. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and the hadith is in Bukhari, sabaqa al-mufarridun, sabaqa al-mufarridun, the mufarridun have uh, passed everybody. They said, Ya Rasulullah, who are the mufarridun? Qal, al-dhakiroon Allah kathiran wa al-dhakirat. The ones, the male and female uh, Muslims that constantly remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Yeah. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala told us in the Hadith al-Qudsi, when we remember him huh, in, a, in a private uh, place or in a public place, he remember us in a place that is better, in a, in a gathering that is better. Allahu Akbar. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me, I remember you. And the reward of dhikr is immense. And we have mentioned series, a lot of uh, uh, videos about the importance of dhikr and the reward of dhikr. For example, saying Subhanallah 100 times, 1000 hasana. Saying Subhanallah wa bihamdih 100 times, all minor sins are forgiven. Subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa Allahu akbar will eliminate all the sins just like the, the, the leaves fall from the branches of the tree. Subhanallah. So many, many rewards of dhikr. Keep the remembrance of Allah on your tongue constantly. The sayings of the morning, they are protection, they are shield from jinn, from sihr. We have so many people complaining about black magic and our evil eye. Make it constant on a daily basis. This is one of your regular routine to remember Allah, to say the adhkar of the sabah and the adhkar of the masa, the evening and the morning adhkar. The best time for the morning adhkar is after fajr, between fajr and shuruq, and you still have the time to do it up to duhr. And the best time for the adhkar of the masa, the evening ones, is between asr and maghrib, and you still have till isha, or the, or the whole night if you forgot. So please make that as a part of your daily routine. Fifth, favoring what Allah loves over what you love. Favoring what Allah loves over what you love will make you from the awliya of Allah. At five o'clock in the morning, me and you love to sleep. And Allah at that time loves us to get up and perform the Fajr prayer. I get up with energy because I want to do what Allah loves. I want to put Allah's, the things that Allah loves, ahead of what I love. I love to have money. All of us, we love to save money and have a lot of money. And Allah loves the one who give in charity. So I give in charity because Allah loves it. Even though I love to save money, to have more money, but because Allah loves something else, I will favor what Allah loves over what I love. Allah, I love to sit down and, and watch shows and watch this and play games. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the one who read the Quran, who sit down in a halaqa, in a class and learn. I will dedicate some time to go and sit in a class or watch a, a, a clip on, on, on YouTube just like you are doing right now. May Allah make you from the people that He loves. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. So I put what Allah loves ahead of what I love. Last one, having the heart live by Allah's names and attributes. Having the heart live by what by Allah's names and attributes. What does that mean? That means when I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al samia my heart will live by that name, that Allah is the all hearing. If I backbite, he's going to hear me. When, when the heart lives by the name of Allah al-Basir, the all seeing, I, this heart will prevent the body, prevent the person from looking at haram because he knows that Allah is watching. He is living by the name Allah al-Basir. When I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Aleem, he is the all knowing, he is al-Wakil, I will put complete trust in him. When I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alim al-ghayb wa shahada, he is the one who knows the unseen. 
I have no uh, fear whatsoever that I completely trust Allah in all my affairs. I live by, when I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Qadir, when my heart believes that Allah is Al-Qadir, He's capable of doing anything, then I will, my dua will completely change. I will ask with certainty, I will ask with yaqeen that Allah will answer. When I know that Allah's name is Al-Mujib, the one who answers, my dua will be completely different. When I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Arham al rahimin He's the all merciful. I know that this hardship that I'm going through is for my own good. So living, the heart living by the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you put all these six things we mentioned, my brothers and sisters, bi we will become from the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman and taqwa, reading the Quran and pondering upon its ayat, increasing the amount of nawafil, remembering Allah abundantly, favoring what Allah loves over what I love, and having the heart live by Allah's names and attributes. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make me and you from his awliya. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people who listen and apply. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashadan la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. Kitabun unzila ilayka fala yakun fi sadrika harajum minhu litunzira bihi wa dhikra lillahi.